running, running a bit late. Running, oh, it's a bit warm, isn't it? Running a bit late, but we're here. We're here. And good morning. I'm Steve Hay. This is Woodwork and Masterclass. Welcome to the workshop. Welcome to the bench. What I'm doing today is we're finishing off, we're trying to finish off a marketry project we did last stream, which was yesterday. And I tell you what, I've had some dramas with it. I'm seeing if I can find the, the bits that I can show you that went horribly, horribly wrong. No, oh, that, they'll turn up, I'm sure. Oh, dear, oh dear, so who have we got in the head? It's warm here. I've got the air conditioner on, but have got a gas stove here that's very, very hot. And if you have a look at it, the, bo the bottom of that little metal thing there is glowing red. So that's how hot it is. That's all part of the marketry process, which we will go into very, very shortly. I don't know where the other bit's gone. So yeah, I had a, um, hang on, let me, let me say good day first. Let me say good day first. Uh, where are we? Uh, Prunella, good morning, Your Highness. How are you keeping this morning? I trust you are well, and your subjects are behaving themselves. If not, you'll have to come down with a big stick. Look at that, I didn't even brush my hair this morning. What a grub. What a grub. What a little hair I've got left. Panda, good day, mate. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Ray. Trevor, good morning. Devon, good morning. Daniel, good morning. Did you get my email? I shot it off to you. Um, good day, Reginald. How are you? I'm getting cramped workspace here, I tell you. Max, very good morning to you, Max Wall. Nice to have you. Did you have a late note for tomorrow, yesterday? Good morning, Jared. Roscoe, hello, how are you? Oh. Yeah, I don't know where Bob is. I, um, I got down here early, so I finished my breakfast and I think he's disgruntled. Oh, yeah, no dramas, Daniel. Yeah, look, I do. I really do like it. And, yeah, they're okay. The only thing I don't like with the ceramic gods, Daniel asked me what I thought about ceramic gods on my bandsaw. Um, they heat up and they do move, whereas bearings, I think, give you less friction, which is good. Daddy, Dobie, how are you? T-Bone, good morning. Wombat, good day. Terry, good day. Got a copy of my complete woodworks. Oh, awesome. Yes, yes, it does. It's got a lot of great information in there, Terry. Uh, I just like looking at it. And if you want to know how to do something, you go back and you read it. And you go, that is, what's going on there? I'm blinking as if I'm recording. I shouldn't be recording. Wait a minute. Did I press the record button by mistook? Perhaps I did. I don't know why that's blinking. No, I don't want to record, so go away. It's on. That's all I need to worry about. No, it's, it's making funny flashing, flashing things at me. Um, oh, da, 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 da. Yeah, and then you go back and you see how they did it, and you go, well, gee, that's how they did it. I should be able to do it now. We've got better steel, better tools. Eating gumbo again, T-Bone. Hope this is just one that you mixed up, not, not one for another funeral. G'day, Andy, how are you? Yeah, they're not, they're not brilliant. Um, now, nah, anyway, move on, the rest of the machine's good. Louise, good morning. Yes, we did get a bit of rain. It's, it's, um, I finished mowing yesterday. I had the poo pit man around this morning to check on the bio cycle and everything. So I had to get in there a moment. Blasted still. Weed whacker wouldn't work. So I had to use an edge trimmer. So, which is another still. I love still. The future still chainsaws and bits and pieces. And I'm down on the ground with the, the um, hedge trimmer. And of course, we've got those horrible 
things, sticky beaks, cogwheels, pegs, farmers, friends, whatever you want to call them. And I was covered in them. It took me about half an hour to pull them all out of my T-shirt. And then I finished mowing the yard, which is good, because I like sitting on my mower. I've got a Hustler Sport zero-turn mower. And it is just a joy. The guy, when I bought my mower, he said, what do you want to do? Because we've got a couple of acres. He said, what do you want to do? Do you want to enjoy mowing or do you just want to do mowing? I said, no, I prefer to enjoy it. He said, spend the extra and get this. And I did. And I have not regretted it one day. Uh, again, funeral. <laughs> what have you learned about Louisiana and who taught it to you? <laughs> it was you, Darren. <laughs> Honestly, I know nothing else. Joa, Joe, Joe, is it? Joe uh, Rodriguez, hi, welcome to the workshop. Thanks for dropping in. Anthony, good morning. I don't recognise you in here before, but I could have missed you in the chat in the last few days, but welcome anyway. Thank you for coming in. <clears throat> G'day, Rich, how are you? Hey Steve, before I forget, any tips on keeping a large box or rectangle square? Hey Steve, before I forget, any tips on keeping a large box or rectangle square? Yep, build it square. <laughs> there was a bloke on blacksmithing, I've forgotten his name, but he said, look, if you want it perfect, just build it perfect. If you want a square, just keep it square. Um, it's constantly checking. Uh, check your diagonals. That's the best way. Check your diagonals. So if you've got a box, um, any square thing, and you get a tape measure diagonally, check that distance, check the other distance, and then if, if it's going to be out, it's going to be larger in one diagonal, shorter in the other, and then, hang on, if it's longer... You just got to push one of the corners in. If it's longer that way, yeah, if it's longer that way, you push this corner and that will square it up. And if you can't get it square, what you do is you halve the difference. So bring it in slowly and slowly until you've got it. The eye is wonderful. It, it looks over a lot of mistakes that squares pick up. But basically, that's it. Cut square, work square, check for square, and then when it's finished, Make it square if it's not square. No, no other advice than that. But start with flat square boards. That really helps. Um, ba -dum, ba -dum. During initial assembly, I mean, when everything's still there. Oh, yeah, look, just exactly what I said before. Just hold it square and clamp it square. Anthony, the guy from New York. I'm the guy from New York. Trouble is, Anthony, I know a lot of guys from New York. But thank you anyway. I, I appreciate it. Making drawers. Oh, thanks. Look, is that... Well, thank you, uh, Robert. I appreciate that. Hard energy out here. It all goes towards helping running this show. So thank you so much. Making drawers. Um... Yeah, the thing with making drawers, in a perfect world, a square drawer will fit into a square um, aperture or opening. But in the real world, I don't have my drawers square. I have a very, very slight taper, maybe a 64th of an inch. Um, would I go as much as a 16th? Yeah, I suppose even a 60, 16th of an inch. I would taper it back to about a sixteenth of an inch or a thirty second, so the back is slightly, slightly smaller than the front. Then when the drawer goes in, it will guide it in. If you've got it dead square, sometimes you get it jamming, unless you're using drawer runners and what have you. So if you have a very, very slight trapezoid, if you like, on the back of the drawer, It'll go in a lot of these. You won't even be able to see it, but you'll know it's there. And, um, yeah, just put them in and rattle them around. 
the, the test of a good draw is you get your finger in the bottom right hand corner or bottom left hand corner, push it and it shouldn't kink, it shouldn't snag, it should go straight in. <laughs> you know more than I do, T-Bone. <laughs> Robert, thank you once more. I've just come back there to that again. Steve is talking all foreign to me. Inches are weird. Well, where do you go? Where do you go after a millimetre? 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.2. Much easier to go. 64th, 128th. But, but they're listed on the ruler. You don't have half millimetres, or do you? Hang on, I'll make a liar out of me here. No, nope, I haven't got half millimetres on that ruler. But I do have rulers with 32nd and 64th of an inch on them. Oh. It's weird, isn't it? It's just a puffteenth. A smidgen, a bees, a fairies. Yeah, Trevor knows what I'm talking about. Uh, metric over Imperial any day. I don't care, it's that big, whatever size it is. Oh, you got one that goes half a millimetre. Well, there you go, Andy. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, Ray, but you do. When, you, when you're fitting drawers, you've got to go way, way smaller than a millimetre. I, rem <laughs> I remember once I'd fitted a drawer on a cedar uh, table, and I was down with Jeff Hannon, and Jeff goes, yeah, what I want you to do is take 128th of an inch down to nothing. And I, I grabbed a sanding block. He said, no, I use a hand plane. <laughs> oh. But we did it. We did it. Uh, well, you imagine a prunella, but no, a millimetre is a third. Would you like the hairs on your head to be a millimetre wide? <laughs> You'd comb them with a saw. From memory, I think they're ten thou. Ten thou of an inch is human hair. Quartz, I couldn't see the sense in quartz. Yeah, you should see some of Jeff's stuff. He, um, not the big cabinet he finished. It's another cabinet he did called the Australiana cabinet. And he pulls the drawer out and there's a box inside the drawer. He turns the box upside down. And it comes out and it's got a box inside and he turns it up like that and it just goes Brrr! and I think there's about six boxes and they're all held in with air pressure. And then he goes like that and they all fall apart. That's precision. Bob, good day. Trev is always on his best behaviour, aren't you Trev? Your best behaviour doesn't equate to other people's best behaviour, but your best behaviour. I'm with you, mate. Morning, Murray. Oh, that's good. How's it going in the workshop? Have you tidied it all up? Uh, okay, let's get back onto this little puppy dog. Now, I did have some issues. You'll notice... The main body of the dog has changed. Yesterday I cut it out originally. $40 worth of veneer just hit the deck. I cut it out originally from this stuff here, palisander. Now what happened when I went to use this to shade the area where the dog's nose comes through 
it dried out and it split. When I tried to fix it, it broke again. So then I thought, oh, the bone is nice, I'll do that. So I did another one yesterday and last night I put his nose in and I thought, oh, I'll just flatten that and I put it between two bits of timber with a squirt of water. Unbeknownst to me, the timber I put it on had a bit of glue on it. So when I came and took it out this morning, it had glued itself and when I tried to get it off, it broke. So I made another one. There we go. I made another one. So that's the one we've got here now. Uh, the other thing I will warn you about very, very muchly. In fact, I'll give you an example. I'll just get some little bits here. Oh, I found that, um, found the red veneer, so I did his tongue in red. All right, now, I will give you an example of one of the very frustrating things that happens when you're doing marquetry. Now this, I'm going to, oh, I've done that one, so I don't have to do that one again, I'll do this one. What I want to do is put a shadow around this eye here. I'll go for these two at the moment. So I'm going to bird some shading around there. Now watch what can go wrong. These are all the other little parts that I've got to put in. They're not. They're fake ones. But it'll show you what can happen. So I've got my tweezer. And let me pull that back a bit so you can get the full impact of this, this dramatic occurrence. Okay, so there we go. So I dip my spoon, that sand is hot. I dip my spoon into the sand. Full of hot sand, I dip, oh, actually I don't dip, I bring the spoon up to the bit I want to scorch. And there it is. Now it gets a bit hot over there, so sometimes you might do it here. And you can shake a little bit. And then this is what happens. It's late at night, you're very tired. That's happened and you go, oh. And guess what you've done? You've blown all your bits into the bin that was full and I couldn't find any of them. So I had to cut them out again. Oh, I was ticked. I was. I was miffed. <laughs> but anyway, we've sorted it. So let me get this one. It's a good idea when you're, um, when you're burning or scorching, you make sure you haven't got... Up. Sticky tape on. Can you see that? That's shiny? That's sticky tape. So we've got to take that off because what happens, the hot sand will melt the gum and then the hot sand sticks, sticks to the gum and then when you try and scrape it off, not always, but there's always a chance, I mean, you look how fine, there's always a chance you're going to break what it is you're trying to scorch. And when you've got thin bits of timber, as thin as this bit on the end, that can break quite easily. Let's put the glue pot back on. Boom, ba -dum, boom, boom. Okay, so what I'm doing is actually putting definition. So you scoop the sand from the bottom 
and bring it up to the timber now. Oh, you don't want that happening. All timber burns at a different rate. And that could be a bit of a disaster, but I think we might be able to fix that. We will see. Okay, that's a bit of a nuisance. Because it's actually... Uh, now nah, look, I think I'll be able to fix that once we get it in. I'll put a bit of bog on there or something or other. Um, got another ear over here to cut. There's a puppy dog there. We go all three. I'm going to cut this ear here. And it's, I've got it sticky taped on. Now I'm following the shape of the head. And you just keep going through until you've got it off. Again, take the sticky tape off. Make sure it's clear. And I'm just going to shadow this part here that's where it meets up with the head, and the head will cast a shadow over that ear. Oh, I can see what's happening. That's coming. There's a flame coming up the side of the tin. In that case, we'll come back down here and we we'll, won't do it over the flame, we'll do it. So there we have a little bit of scorching, and that then can go there. I don't know if I'm going to cut a new eye out there or not. That can go there. We've got these pores here. I have to cut around. Very gently, very carefully, I'll swap glasses. And that's better. I can, I can nearly see if it was clean. There you go, that's better. Okay. Yeah, it sounds a lot more lovely wife coming down. Yeah. You know how I could tell? 
Bob can't open the door? Yeah, well, you can open it, but you can't shut it. <laughs> no, I'll just cut this out. How's everything up at the Hacienda? Yeah, good. Anthony woken up yet? Oh. Do you want to go back? I didn't see him either. Oh, there you go. Mm. Oh, you've been too busy. Take that tongue out. Okay. Now what I've got to do... Ah, you mongrel. Mm, done that. I'll just take... This off. Really is fragile. As I said to you yesterday, you can't do this if you're in a bad mood because you'll either stop because your mood's going to get worse or your mood will get better. Is that right? It sounds a bit about yeah, but I think it's English. Oh, okay. This is where I I like a sellotape brand of sticky tape. You can get cheaper ones, but sometimes they leave too much gum. Behind, whereas sellotape I find is much more pleasant to work with. Okay, now we've broken that, but that's all right. It'll, that will fix. And it really is important that you get all the sticky tape off, especially the back side. The front side, it doesn't matter because when you start um, putting it together, you can scrape it off then. But the back side, once you put the glue down, if it's got tape on it, it won't stick and you'll have an air bubble there. Now I'm going to just put this in here. It's a little shadow there. I oh, know I'm throwing sand everywhere, but I can live with that. And I want a little bit where the tongue is. The tongue's here. I've got a shadow on the tongue where it's coming out of his mouth, but just the bottom of the tongue is just going to have a little bit of shadow on it. You can make spoons to do this. But that's how I do it. So we've just got a little bit of a shadow there. All right. Um, I think... I think that's it. So we can turn that off. I'll move this camera and we can have... have Susie's. What did you bring? What did you bring? I've bought a... Oh, let me just move this down. Probably a half a Is that what you were working on yesterday? Is that what you were working on yesterday? Ah, ha, ah, that's hot. All right, let me move my chair out of the way. Mm. Oh, I'll make sure I've got nothing here that can. Burn?
Let's have a look. What have you been doing? This is a cock quilt. Oh, is it a cock quilt? I thought it was a single bed quilt. Oh, it might be a single bed. Depends on how big I make it. <laughs> twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder. No. Do you know how, much, how loved you are? Oh, there you go. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Do you know how loved you are? We could say sweet nothing, so you come behind here. See, nobody knows what we're doing. Absolutely. Just behave yourself. No, go away over there and get me into trouble. <laughs> family show. And what do you got? You got a, let's go over here an with. elephant. No, we'll, we'll do okay. it on this one and we'll do that one. There you go. What do you got? You got a monkey. A heifer lump. Elephant cuddling his toy. Oh, it is. It's so cute. And what have you got down the bottom? Down the bottom we have a lion. Oh, I like that. He's like the paddle pop lion, isn't he? Yeah. And, and what a have teddy we... bear cuddling a half. Oh, I love that. That's a lovely colour. Is that one of my fabrics? I think it must be. It's a nice it one. It must be. It must be. Absolutely. That's a nice... Have you tied my machine up yet? Absolutely. You're a good girl. <laughs> Hey, well, let's see who wants to talk to you. We've got, oh, God, I hope I don't lose all my bets. I'm <laughs> marketry bets. I've lost oh, all no, the other, I've mean. lost everything else. Oh, Steve, it looks like you haven't had a haircut for 30 days. Mate, you're right. I haven't. I'm not going to get a cut until this is over. I'll cut it live on stream. I'll do it sight unseen. Fine. What? Oh, I just get the whole buzz cut out. Meow, meow. Oh, well, I wonder. Oh, I should trim yourself looking at that. Who wants me to do a haircut live? <laughs> oh, dear. Um. Oh, <laughs> it's fun, Dean. It's fun. What are we up to? Oh, we'll go back a bit. G'day, Tom. How are you? Welcome to the workshop. Uh, Murray, just, I've just picked up from the post at H&T Gordon's Moving Plane. Fantastic. It's not only a magnificent plane, but a beautiful piece of workmanship. Gidgey's great timber, hard and a great colour. I should ring Terry up and tell him that. Uh, could you use a wood-burning pen for... Uh, I suppose you could. I've never used it. Um, the reason I like sand, it burns both sides at once. Whereas, oh, I suppose you could use, you could use a hot poker, you could use whatever floats your boat. That was what I was taught to use, John. That, that's why I use it, I suppose. Um, <laughs> Trevor, I helped, helped her out of bed this morning. Well, I pushed her out anyway. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm surprised you've lived as long as you have, Trevor. I really do. Oh, dear. See ya, Bob. Interesting. I'm watching Steve on my iPad and Royal Highness watching British Bacon on Netflix. Thank you. 19. There you go. I love mine. Yeah, they're good. Not saying, okay, see you later. Stay safe, Bob. Wife is telling me what to do for a sec. Yeah, mine for a second. Mine tells me what to do all the time. Trevor knows what I'm talking about. I'm not saying a word. No, you don't have to. You've got the looks. Hi, Ray. Um, and Andy. And John. Oh, look at them all coming in now. Hi, Louise. Max is so formal. I like that. Yes. And Prunella and Tango. Hey, Tango, you slipped in. You slucking unannounced. <whistles> Steve, it looks like you have... No, OK, we've got that. We, we're almost up to date now. does a big jump, you're reading it, and then all of a sudden, zoom. Yep. Devin said hi. Hi, Devin. Oh, and there you get, oh, that's sweet, that's awesome, lovely. 
Trevor says, good day, Ross, go give him a... Don't get... Stop being on her side. She's... Somebody's got to be. Oh, rubbish. You've got Mother Nature on your side. <laughs> I've got Father Time on mine. Look what he's done to me. Oh, look. Just see. Everything... <laughs> yeah, I've got a lawnmower, but I guess you're talking about me head, hair. Merwin! G'day. Gee, they like it too. Oh, well, that's good, yeah. Good morning, Brian. Ricardo, hi from Panama. Well, g'day. Thanks for dropping in. Oh, we're through stream. You found out about Terry's place. I've got, I've got to let him oh, know. Sure, Terry, all the Terry would be that. wrapped with that. Oh, we're going to draw the thing tomorrow, aren't we? Mm. Yeah, that's right. Very, very nice quilt, Seuss. Uh, Barry, hello, Barry, Barry. Did I say hello? Oh, hello, Barry. T Tony, well, you're going to let her send her an email, aren't you? I will send you an email, yes. I promise. That reminds me of my favourite Martian. Hmm. Yeah. Jeez, you were only a little kid then. Oh, I was a big kid. You're a big kid. I You're was. still a big kid. Yeah, I know. I was just still got more expensive toys than I had. Yeah. <laughs> me too. Oh dear. Just sharing the trouble, mine gives me... Yeah, no, it's good. We, we've got to have a bit of solidarity. We'll, we'll have a minority, a majority of one. Oh. Jeff crawls in and polishes Brunella's slippers before taking the seat. Uh, what, what country is Tony in? Tony, where are you? You're in the States, aren't you? <coughs> She'll find out about postage, that's all. Yeah. Oh, we're doing well, yeah. aren't we? We are. We are. We are. I did say this morning, I can't believe, we're hitting 40 tomorrow. Yep. 40. Whew. You remember when you were 40? I thought I was old then. No, yeah, we had a good a 40th. A time ago. No, it was my 42nd. No, but I had a 40th birthday when the boys came down and yeah. we, we had water pistols. Mm -hmm. We just drank at your 42nd. Yeah, that's oh. right. Oh. Well, one, one guy owned the bookshop in town. This is when we lived in the bush and we had a big do for Susie's 42nd. Now, the party started... When did it start? Saturday, was it? Friday. Friday. Friday night we lit the fire, which didn't go out till Tuesday... When was the party? Was that Friday or Saturday? Saturday night. Saturday night was the party and I went in to see my mate that owned the local bookshop on Thursday and he still had a hangover. Mm. It was a big, a big week that night. And we had a long veranda and it was full of bottles. Empty ones, I made. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't remember any full ones being no. there. No. Is the barometer dead? Always good weather that it's... A, it's always good weather in the shed. I've never had... I've never had any... Rain. <laughs> bad rain in here. It's, and we'll just move that around to very dry. And it's, it always is quite dry in here. Mm. It gets hot sometimes. It does. So. All right. Yeah, Tony's in the States. Yeah. Cool. Pennsylvania. Oh, I'm going to do a Pennsylvania spice cabinet. That's oh, okay. That timber over oh, there okay. is for, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. I've been wanting to make one of those for ages. Mm. All right. Well, I'm going to go back to work. Go and wake the boy if he's not awake and check on the others. You, oh. uh, Tony, I'm a little late getting here this evening. I'm researching options to help my aquarium do better than it's doing currently. Here's a tick. Put water in it. Well, that, that'd work, wouldn't it? That'd work. I don't know if that's any help, but it's just from a novice, I think they need water. I think they give, do. <laughs> give us a mooch, old duck. Particularly if they're... You, oh, you finished that last night, didn't you? Yeah. The apple. Mm. Yes, I did. Your apple that. turnover. Yes, I did finish that. Sat up, watched Master Chef. 
woofing down apple turnover with chocolate icing on the top and cream. You should have seen the look on Bob's face. Ha! In I did, I did. You made the trifle. I only bought your, your, your yeah. apple slice. So, whatever, what's the apple turnover? Yeah. That's it. All right, now I'll catch you later. <laughs> When's our anniversary? No, no, 40 days straight in the stream. God, we get manacled together over 43 years. We go 44 years, I think. Oh. <laughs> Every day's a celebration. Sue's gone. Evil dude. Oh, D Dally. Evil? Evil? G'day. <coughs> no, I've got a room. Got several rooms up in the house. Huh? Oh, yeah, I saw that one, John. Yes, I didn't show Susie that. But that, that should be the homework for the kids today when Anthony wakes up. Dusting off snow. Oh, wow. I, I wouldn't mind a bit of snow here, but it doesn't snow in Queensland very often. Oh, Stanthorpe. They get a bit of Stanthorpe, I suppose. All right, now, let's get back to this thing. I think I've done all the burning. I hope I've done all the burning because I've turned the blinking thing off. And we'll see how we're looking. That's there. This is there. And I'm here. And I've got me Mr. Magoo glasses on so I can't see squat. And we are working from the back. So I've got to get all this sand off. And anything that's sticky. This break here, I'm not going to worry about it because when we actually put it all together, that'll seal up. Yeah, just got to be mindful of it. like a skull, doesn't it? Well, I suppose it is. It's a dog skull. <sighs> and as I've said before, working with this stuff, you just treat it like normal normal timber but everything's in miniature. When I use glue, have I men mentioned I like this, but I hate the way these tops keep on fouling up. Okay, we just use a little bit of glue. See how much glue I've got there? Not much at all. I'm gonna do it. I'll just wipe glue on my new apron. It's, it's now no longer a new apron. Okay, we'll do the tongue first. Bum, ba, dum, bum. Now, if this was not a cartoon, type dog, I would actually cut this tongue in half and scorch it down the middle so it would have a shadow, but I can't be bothered. Okay, so here we go. This goes in here. Now we're working from the back. It's got a pencil mark there, pencil mark there, so we know we're coming from the back. And you just treat it like any other bit of timber. Mm. 
glue it but you just use a lot less glue now I'm using PVA to put this in because it's quicker but when I put it into the grounding I'll actually use hide glue hang on we're missing the we're missing a bit of me tongue oh that's a nuisance that's a big nuisance and we might have to cut another tongue out later on unless I can find it I haven't blown it away but don't worry about trying to find it just keep on Moving on with what you're doing. And there will be times when you'll just want to throw it all away. But stick with it. Now to hold that in place, I make little little sutures up out of sticky tape so what you do you put it down put your sticky tape down and then give it one or two cuts it doesn't matter and then divide it up into just small squares and then you've got a little square like that and you put that over what you've just glued Hold that one in place, and then this one here goes there. A little bit of glue. Like that. Pop it where it's meant to go. square over it like steri strips there you go now we do his paws see if we can get the sticky tape off Make sure we got the right paws on the right side. Yep. A little bit of glue around. Actually, with this, we can put the. Yeah. What are we doing? We'll put the glue around here. A little bit more glue. And don't forget, we're still working from the back. We haven't got the 
front happening yet. And yeah, you can get CNC machines to do this. And laser cutters. But where's the joy in that? I'm using tight bond original it glues nice and quickly, which is a huge, huge bonus. I oh, don't tell me I've got these around the wrong way. Again. Oh, I think I have. What I would normally do is I actually number all the parts, but because this is a bit ad hoc, I didn't. There we go. That's what I want. You'd think if one part fitted one part and you put it in wrong, the other part would fit the other part, but... No, it doesn't work that way. Okay, so we'll just glue this one up again. Oh, I think it's going to look quite nice. Oh, I do. Go. Oh, yeah, baby. Now, these eyes. I'm gonna go and get that seat. Tony, you said you'd sit down and do it. I think it's a lot. Perhaps I was a lot younger when I was doing it before, but yeah, I think sitting down is gonna be, oh, a much better option. Oh. Yeah, unfortunately, what has happened when we were burning, I've lost a bit of material, but I still think we'll be okay. No, wait a minute, I'm telling lies, we're not. I've actually got the the front up here. I think if I can find that other no. Just looking for a really, really small red piece, but I can't find it, so we'll have to cut another tongue out. 
which means flipping it over. And cutting another tongue. There we go. It's not the sort of, it's not what I would call a spectator sport. By the way, this is another method of doing marquetry, only you don't actually use the piece as a template, you have a cardboard cut out and then it's called the window method. I think it was developed back in the 60s. It does give you a very accurate fit. As you can tell, it takes a bit of concentration. Hoping that's going to be the full tongue. Yep. And there we have another tongue, but I've got to burn it now. So I'm thinking I might do those eyes again, so I'm not Let's see if I'm Okay, so that's him so far. But I'm going to just put a little bit of broke a tip off there, which is annoying. But I think we'll get away with that. So I've just got to burn on the edge of there, which means I've got to fire this thing up again. Up. 
Yeah, I think that that's all right. We'll get away with that. Then we're going to find the oval that we cut yesterday and put it actually in the oval. I might just move all this stuff away, away, away. Oh, there's the oval. So we'll come from the back. And find where you reckon about the middle and then tape it down. There you go. Now cut around that. And as you cut, replace the sticky tape. that you cut through. That way you're always going to be nice and firm on the background. Keep going until you feel it go through. Once you feel it go through, move on. Replace that sticky tape there so it's still flat. Move on to the next bit. It's interesting. Oh, I'm uh, breathing glasses here now. It's a bit bony when it comes to the going around the corners, I tell you. Yep. And there's a case in point. I um, went off track a little bit, but because I'm working on the back. You won't see it. Mm. 
Just waiting for that sand to heat up again. But it's okay, we don't need we don't need it yet because the moment all I'm doing is the outside. Have a look around here and see if you're okay. It seems all right. Whoop. Okay, this is broken part of his paw off. So let's glue that back on. And just accept the fact that these things happen. If I'm down all the way through there, glue that back down again. Spin around. It's a very selfish pastime. <laughs> you don't talk to anyone while you're doing it. So I amputated a bit of his foot there, so we'll just have to. Be mindful of that when we go around it. And you're constantly changing grain direction, which is challenging. Every so often, just have a look on the other side. See how you're going, okay, you've cut there, cut there, cut there, cut there, okay, we're going all right, at least we, we know we're through. Went off track again, which is another bonus of doing this reverse stuff. We're starting to lose a little bit of the charred bits or the shading only because it's burnt timber and well basically it's charcoal. That's okay, don't worry about it, just keep on going because we'll fix all that up once we've got it in the box. It's almost as, watch, as exciting as watching wood turning. There you go, wood turning on Prozac. All right, we're getting there.
I would love to stop and chat, but as you can imagine, once you started, you just got a lot like jumping off a cliff. Once you've started the downward descent, just strap in for the ride. I was using a scroll saw. Yeah, it'd be a lot quicker. And if I had to pass for me record power scroll saw, I'd use a scroll saw. But I'm still waiting on them. Because to do marketry, the blade that I need, I use a number 70 which is thinner than a sewing needle. But I had a misplaced the mounting blocks. So I can't put it in, I can only put pinned ones in at the moment and pinned saw blades are too thick for what I need. Be very careful here because you're coming up to some short grain on a very brittle timber. So we'll see if we can keep his paw intact. I think we might have done that okay there. I like, I like these big long runs. Reasonably straight ones. Around his other lug hole. Honestly, if I wanted to show you how easy it was, <laughs> I would have picked much easier the timber to work with. But when have I ever done anything this easy? Then you do this and you take to a market and someone says, I'll give you $40 for the box. Yeah, right, eh? I'm so pleased you lot get on in the chat room and can talk amongst yourselves. <clears throat> okay. We're on the downhill run now. We are. I kid you not, that gas stove next to me is a mite uncomfortable. Oh, look. 
look at that. Whoop. We're almost there. Oh, I think we are. So what we can do now is take all this sticky off. Got to be so mindful of what you're doing. Oh, they check me batteries in a minute too, I suppose. Move him off and that's what we got now, so I'm just going to cut that out. And this is literally what you call handwork. There are no shortcuts. I mean, there are. There are. There are different techniques of doing this. In fact, I worked it out today. I know seven ways of doing it. There we go. All right, so that should come out. All things being equal, this should fit in there. We do it upside down like that. Uh, I'm going to just burn this tongue, then I'll have a chat, and then we'll put it all together. Okay, here we go. Where are we? Uh, let's go. This one here, I'm not going to hold it over the flame because it's going to be too hot. All I want to do is just do a little burn at the back. So just at the back of the... What have we got? That. A little bit more. There you go. So I can put that one away now. And, and I can almost be a human being. Oh. oh, let me change eyes. Well, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry I haven't been talking to you. But, oh. We'll put that all together in a minute. So what is happening? Ba -bum -ba -dum. Oh, what's that? Oh, da -da 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 -da
Oh, I used to use black sand, but <laughs> someone told me it was radioactive, so I stopped using it. Oh, that's good, Prunella. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, look, this is just a bit of fun, this one. Um, it's, got, it's got a lot of mistakes, but that's fine because I'll show you how to overcome them. All right, so now what we can do is... Is, 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 is. Where is these boards? Did you think I could find those last night? Not on your Nelly. No way known could I find that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is... Um, it's going to be a bit unorthodox, but it is orthodox. Hey, you like that? It's going to be a bit unorthodox, but it is orthodox. And I will explain why I'm doing that. I'm just looking for a bit of newspaper. Oh, here we go. There's a bit. Oh, it's very, very dear. Now, we've got the basis of the face there, but I haven't got any expression lines. By that, I mean these. So we haven't got, I've got, we've got the paws, we've got the ears, I've put ear inserts there, but we don't have that which denotes the line, which is the balance of the nose, and we haven't got this jolly piece in here. But what I'm gonna do with that, or how I'm gonna do that, is I'm going to fill them the same way as I do with pateras. If I can find a patera, I did have a box full of darn things around here before. Oh, here we go. That's these. Oh, that's nice. I like that one. That's these things here. Come here. Oh, disobedient blinking cameras, I don't know. Okay. So that's these things here. When they're cut, see if I can find a cut one for you. All right, here's one that hasn't been filled. Because when they're cut, they're all cut in different pieces and they have saw marks behind them, which end up, find a better example, yeah, as gaps. And what you do is you then fill those gaps with a putty or a paste, and it fills the gaps up, which then gives you, I've got one here, where is it? then gives you that effect which has been filled with um, yeah putty and then they just look like really really fine lines instead of gaps so what I've decided I'm going to do for the expressions is exactly that I'm going to cut gaps in them uh, behind the dog's face and fill it with putty now that timber I'm using there is called Vivona. It's, uh, it's, it's the burl off of the redwood tree. It's very, very nice, but very, very brittle. So how I'm going to fix that is by gluing the motif onto some newspaper and when it's dry, we might be able to do it today, it depends how long it takes, but when it's dried I'll then cut in lines either using a knife or a, a carving chisel and then backfill it with black putty and then 
what we'll have is an oval that's covered in newspaper, which we will then set into the top of that box. And then when we scrape the newspaper off, it'll all look good. In fact, we might even scrape it off before we put it onto the box. So let's see how we go. I've lost an eyeball. Where's his eyeball gone? There's his tongue. Oh, there's the other eye. I saw the eye. And if you notice, I mean, I've got a whacking dirty great big hole on this, this eye here. But because that's meant to be black and shaded, I can fill that with black um, putty and you won't notice it. Guaranteed. Okay. So here goes nothing. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use high glue with this. It's going to get messy, but it's going to be okay. Needs a bit more water in there, I think. Because it's a bit... I think my um, glue pot might be on the... the fritz. I'm starting to think. Let's put that in there and find out. Oh, oh, it's doable. I like to keep mine at 70 degrees. For whatever reason, that's coming up as 80 degrees. 10 degrees is okay. You don't want it much more than that because it'll burn. And even the look of that looks a bit black. But for what we're doing, it should be fine. Let me just clean all that off. Oh. Put that glue pot there. Put a bit more water in it. There we go. All right, so here we go. Because I'm not worried about making a mess, I'm just going to glue all on the inside. We'll see if we can get all three going. Normally, I would very gently go around there and just put glue in there, but I'm gluing it to this. So for that, I'm just going to... Oh, hang on. Yeah, no, I'll just... Glue it all up, I think. Okay, so that's glued up there. We'll put, whoops, broke a bit there, but that's all right. Now I'm going to glue this into the box top using hide glue as well. Now let's get this in. Let's see what I'm going to do. Do this. You've got to be pretty quick, especially with a burl, because it'll swell on you, which isn't isn't ideal. I'll get that eyeball. Stick him in there like that. And get the tongue. Stick him in there like that. And get another bit of paper, wherever it is. Put this over the back. Oh, I'm looking for a little hammer. Yeah, I'm 
I'm just making sure I've got everything in the same plane. I haven't got anything sticking up. Because if I've got anything sticking up at the back here, what that means is it's going to be dropped down in the front, which is going to create a problem like I've got there. Sort that out in a minute. Okay, now this this paw that we broke earlier on's just come a little bit from together, so we'll just ask what it. The fibres are just separated. Okay, so that's looking good. What I'll do now is. Go and put that in the press. I'll do, just, just make sure we've got everything there. We've got two eyes, two paws. That's that and that and that. That's good. So I'll leave that overnight. I won't pull that out um, to show you because it's just going to. All you're going to see is newspaper. But tomorrow, when we pull it out, it's going to be nice and flat and hard. And more importantly, it's got newspaper on the other side. What that newspaper does, in fact, if I've got... Oh, dearie, 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 dearie. Let me have a look. Oh, here you go. This will this will do. On a very very small scale. Is it on the floor? Everything ends up on the floor. All these bits too, just keep them. You, you never know when you need just a little bit or the circles particularly when I cut the ovals out to put something in, I keep those because so often you want an oval to go in a box that you want to put a motif next to. I'll just make a bit of room here. Where is that stuff? There you go. All right. If I wanted to cut a very small circle out of a piece of veneer, Sands, log down to the beach, gets in everything. And then I'll just do a bit of housekeeping here. Yuck. All right. If I wanted to say... I did have a bit. All right, this, this part here on the eye. That little bit there on the eye. If I wanted to cut that out of ebony... This is what happens. Put that down there, put that there.
Now ebony is fairly tough. And I just want to take that little piece out there. Just that little bit there. So I've got that big bit hanging around. I'll just move that. <laughs> this could make a liar out of me. I might be so accurate that I'll get it wrong. So I'll come around here. Glasses would be real good. So far, so good. This could present a bit of a problem. Okay, it did. It wasn't disastrous we we could cope, but this started to separate right on the edge there, but they just see if I can get it. That bit there on the end of my knife, that bit broke off. However, if you have paper glued to the back of it, I'm hoping that I can see this. There we go. Okay, so if you've got paper glued to the back of it, the fibres won't come apart because you've got that newspaper on the back. So that's why I put the newspaper on the back of that. And what I'll do is in that soft uh, Vivona burl, I can cut those, the, the nose ridge and the expression lines for the jowls and take it out and it won't split the veneer. Whereas if I tried that without newspaper on it, she's 50-50. It might split or it might not, but I'm not prepared to take the chance. Ah, so that's a little trick. If you get into it and you're having problems with veneer splitting, put a bit of newspaper on it. There's a, another technique I do uh, with double bevel and I always put newspaper on the back that way I can do the smallest of smallest piece of detail and it won't come apart. I could do a teardrop a millimetre in width and it will stay together. And no matter how flaky the, the timber, because I've got wood behind it. We'll do double bevels later on. As I said, once I get my scroll saw up and running, I've got a couple of scroll saws over there. One I can't get to and one I don't like using because it's too fast. 
that a splinter or a cut? It's a splinter. Wait a minute. Let me just gouge the splinter out. They ask you why you carry a pocket knife. This is why. Well, nearly got it all. That's good. In. There you go. See, look at that. They're, they're just the smallest of things, but oh, gee, they get annoying. Ah, oh, okay. Um, bum, bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Where are we? Here we go. Let me have a chat because I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Uh, the end's off. Oh, there you go. Well, for what are we? Uh, no, no, I'll go back 10 minutes. So 38. The Bob recipe just. Yeah, I don't know about happy little accidents, I'll tell you, it gets frustrating sometimes. Mm. Thanks, David. No, look, it's fun, you just switch off. See you, Ian. All the best, mate. Thanks for coming in. That's what, well, I could if I wanted to, if it was... If it was a high-end bit of marquetry that I was doing for a job, I would actually inlay ebony. So I would cut it out and inlay strips of ebony to go in there. But it's not. It's just a fun bit for a stream, put in the top of a box, have a bit of a chuckle about, and that's that. So I'm not too pedantic about it. But, yeah, if it was a deer one, I would actually inlay the, uh, ebony in there. <clears throat> I, I've never seen a, a redwood tree in real life, Dean, but I tell you what I do, I, the uh, Vivona veneer, that's a bland piece, it's ready, but oh, I've got stuff out there that's got cream to dark black coffee coloured, coming back out to tan, all with that beautiful burl and it's absolutely stunning. <laughs> well, I hope you're back now, Tony, thanks for sharing that. A little bit too much information, but that's good, Bud. Mm. Uh, no, look, the 14th, the uh, Rikon's good. Where, whereabouts are you? Bob, are you in Australia? You're in America. So, mate of mine sells Rikon here, just up the road, and it's not a bad looking machine. It definitely does, Prunella, it does give it that extra layer of um, substance, substance. Oh, I just saw that there. She'll be right. No, the old mat will still be... I've got a couple of new ones Susie's gave me. She's got about 20 of them up in the shed. But anyway. Hey, Wes. Hey, Ange. How you going? Hi, Randy. I don't think I said hi, but hi, Randy. What a bum, bum, da, da, bum, ba, da, bum. Um, whoops, where are we going? Hey, Yvonne, I'm pleased you're liking it. Thank you for watching. They all help, Tony. I learned, well, a lot of stuff I figured out myself, but a lot of stuff I was taught to. Oh, I was going to bring marquetry books down. I'll bring them down tomorrow for those that want to get into marquetry. Yeah. Yeah, I can't guarantee it'll be successful, though, unless I can fix my mistakes with wood, wood bog, Andy. Mm. 
Ba -bum. Oh, thanks, dude. I, I was wondering if it was going to be boring as, you know, watching grass grow or something, but yeah, it's, it's fun. It's fun. And we're here for the long haul, so who cares? <laughs> well, providing we don't go into in depth conversations about ones or twos, I guess it's okay. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh. All right. What are we going to do now? Oh, let's have a look at this box and see what else we can work out with it. Oh, that fell down. Do I have any other? Oh, I want to make a. I want to make a stand for it. I did have a stand over there that I started to make for an oak box, which I really liked. So I might, might do that. Um, might even do an ebony stand. That'd be cool. I'm going to put that orange leather on the inside. That'll be nice. Uh, oh, oh, I just got one of those. You remember those 3D books that came out where you had to go blurry eyed? I just had one of those moments, looked at that, and it all of a sudden went real weird on me. Um, now, where did I, did I bring it over here or did I leave it over there? Don't, oh, I know what I've got to do. I'll do a bit of, I'll do a bit of this while I'm talking. I've got to rub these back. Oh. So if I rub these back while I'm talking, I'm actually getting work done. These hearts. These are for a box as well. I'll rub that back. I think a bit of 600 if I've got any 600. 800. No, I've got 800 a little there. Should be right. It's only 200. Who cares? Oh, dear. Yeah, Theo, they're coming, mate. I'll give, you, I'll give you a ring. No, not that Theo. This is a different Theo. Uh, Those of you that don't know what these are for, there's a go inside some box lids. wanted to do didn't work out so I was a bit disappointed with what happened so I'm just trying to fix it and I don't know if it will get fixed actually I'll, I'll tell you what I'll try it again I might get a better result I don't know I want a soft sort of polish look to it and I'm not getting it which is a tad disappointing not half as disappointing as not been able to find what I'm looking for well, where did that start? oh there it is give us a bit of a go with a bit of brass eh? we'll see Um, ba -dum, bum, ba -dum. Uh, do I ever get my? Where do you get your patience from? Oh no, I've got heaps of patience because I didn't, I didn't have very much when I was young. <laughs> so, what what it is? I used to be a bit of a hothead when I was a young fella. And so I didn't use any of the patients up in my 20s, possibly 30s, and definitely teen years. So now I've still got all those patients that I didn't use when I was younger, Max. Oh. 
I'll see if this does what I want it to do, and I, I really don't know. No, it's not. Well, that is a huge disappointment, sports fans. Oh, well. I'll just have to persevere. Um, well, that's what I'll do too. I'll, I'll do a little bit on the... Oh, that's what I've got to show you. I'll do a little bit more on the... wall cabinet. And I was talking about um, arts and craft and Art Nouveau and what have you. Here's a genuine, a genuine panel out of an arts and craft piece, Australian piece, Silky Oak, but that's the motifs they used to use. Lilies, that sort of borderline, I, I reckon that's a crossover myself, it's a crossover between Art Nouveau and um, Arts and Crafts, which I think it was William Morris was very much sort of, yeah, half and half, but it's good stuff, it's nice things to try. Now that one's done, so let me let me get another one and do another one. Okay, well in that case, you'd be right about it, Tony. It's okay. I can handle it. I, I can handle it. <laughs> oh, dear. Another 15 days at least. Are they going to start slackening it off a little bit in Queensland, apparently? Everyone's going to go to the park. So <laughs> You watch petrol prices go up. Yeah, good on you. Or oh, I might have just been cynical. Another 15 days. Yeah, no, it's, it's a pretty, pretty good buy. I forget how many hours it took me to do that diamond pattern. I know, I know it was a long time. So might as well finish. And if I wasn't streaming, it would have remained over there in the shelf. So I'm thankful for that. I still haven't worked out what um, carving I'm going to do on the uh, wall cabinet. So that's something I'm still working on. Yeah, I'm a bit, bit ticked off with the finish I use. This is I was going to shellac these all the way through, but then I thought, oh, no, I'll try some wipe on poly. And I'm really not a fan. I think it's horrible stuff. And the sad thing is I've thought it's horrible stuff for years. And I've never used it. And I thought, oh, well, I'll give it a go. You can't say things no good unless you give it a go. So I've given it a go and it's horrible stuff. And I've gone too far, I can't wipe it all off and start again because I don't think I've got that much veneer to play with underneath. No, it's, it's disgusting stuff. Definitely not a, not a fan.
Here we go. Oops. Ow! Oh, my goodness. But I'm boom, but I'm. Oh, hang on, where are we? Oh, I, I, I thought I saw a comment from Louise. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, why not, Louise? Sounds good to me. Come over, you can be live on stream. There you go. You only, you only want to come over so you can get some high glue. I know. I want the coffee shops to open so I can sit down and catch them on all my correspondence while I'm having a nice coffee. I sort of I've reached a compromise. I'll go and buy a coffee and I sit in the car park and eat it and read my book because it gives me, I can get an hour out of a cup of coffee and it gives me an hour to catch up on reading because I don't have anyone else like me but when I'm at home there's no way I can take an hour off and be selfish and just have it to myself unless of course if I'm sleeping but then if I'm sleeping I can't read a book and I just love the idea of sitting there having a nice brew and chilling. That one's not bad. Uh. What are we up to, are we? Muddy bomb. Did we just take another jump in the chat? I think we did. There we go, okay. No, still got a way to go on those. They, they was a de there was a deadline on, on these, um, but then all this business happened and what they were for actually got postponed until it's lifted. So I thought, oh, well, I'll move on to something else. And they're close. They're close to being finished. I've just got to finish putting um, hinges in and then a final finish and assembly but all the components are done and, and I've enjoyed doing other stuff too so it's it's one of those things Oh, yeah, I wonder what they're going to go and buy. Steve, Tony, Steve, just for your info, in my world... Oh! See, my parlance says bathroom break. Well, anyway, there you go. Um, yeah, look.
look, it depends, Andy. What, what do you want? Do you want it to just sit there? Is it one that's going to be used? Or uh, what? I, I quite like oil finishes. As I said, the, the quickest finish, if you really want acrylic, gives a nice finish. Uh, oil finishes are nice and soft, but you can get finger marks on them. French polishing is my preferred finish, but it takes a lot of time. And if it's not uh, a labour of love and you're not getting paid for it, don't do it because it takes so long. If it was going in an exhibition and it was a good exhibition, I'd French polish it. But I would stay away from wipe on poly, I tell you. What rubbish. Yuck. I'm sorry, Tony. Doesn't matter. Well, you could have a BRB square, couldn't you? They could be both. Yeah, no, I don't know. I um, I think actually my patience started to kick in once I started working with Jeff and uh, one of his students, and I realised. If it's going to take X, Y, Z, it's going to take X, Y, Z. I had a, yeah, could say life-changing incident before that that sort of spun me around a fair amount. And uh, I thought, well, who cares? That's not to say, Max, don't, don't get me wrong. I can still hurl bits of metal, bits of timber and spanners <laughs> Whatever else, I have been known to. I have been known to. But when I'm doing this, this to me is... Well, this basically, if something goes wrong when I'm doing this, it's just my own fault. So I can't blame anyone else. But if I go and buy something and it doesn't fit and it says it fits and it doesn't, that tends... Tends to get me a bit stroppy. And Sue bought something the other day from a chemist. And uh, she bought it home. She couldn't get it working. I read the instruction book. I couldn't get it working. We took it back to the chemist. The two chemist staff couldn't get it working. So they said, oh, we'll give you a refund. Okay, terrific. Oh, we can't give you a refund right away. Oh, right, eh? So anyway, Susie went back a couple of days later. Oh, we're not sure if we can give you a refund. We've got it working now. I thought, well, that's not the point. The point is I couldn't get it working. My wife couldn't get it working. Your staff couldn't get it working. We needed something. We've gone and bought it somewhere else to give us a refund. Oh, no, you, you took the tags off. It's a health issue. Well, it's not a health issue if it didn't work. Oh, no, I'm going to have a rant. That's it. So, for goodness sake, just bite the bullet. It's a new, new shop. If it doesn't want to get a bad reputation, I think it should swallow hard and say, well, I'm sorry about that. There's a refund. I mean, it's only 50 bucks. Goodness sake. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I was going to go off on another tangent, but I won't. I won't. I'll control myself. I will be that person. I'll do the rest of these. I've only got three to go. Uh. Oh. oh, I don't know, Ray. I, I certainly hope they don't. Oh. But I filled my truck up yesterday. <laughs> $13. I thought, you little rip -eyed. I drive my truck more than the MX-5 now because I enjoy driving it more, but it was costing too much at a dollar fifty a litre. Well, what's that dollar fifty a litre? That's six. That's over seven dollars a gallon. 
But while it's cheap, I'll drive the truck. I, I just hope, I really hope this ban's lifted and we can travel and still have cheap petrol because as soon as it is, I'm out west. Me and the chainsaws, we're going on a holiday. I am absolutely champing at the bit to get out there and cut some timber. How much beef would you want brought back, Trevor? That is, there's um, at least 200 burls lying on the ground of this paddock that I want to go and get. So I bought back 100, that filled my trailer up, and I reckon there's another 200 out there. Yellow box, very hard but pretty. I've made a, turned a few boxes out of it and bowls, good for knife scales. Handles, chisel handles. There we go. One more. Oh, don't like that. There we go. Ah, oh, what have we got? One more to go. Oh. Oh. <laughs> what? Well, I just thought, you know, that it's just one of those, one of those things. I just, I, well, I don't know, Tony. I, I don't know. You just be about it. I keep hoping, uh, Tony, I keep hoping humanity learns from these things to do their business in earth-friendly ways. Yeah, I know. It's Unfortunately, I think the greedy head of, the, well, the, the big head of greedy, greed will rise once again. Um, but hey, we don't have to buy into it. It's okay. Uh, Maybe not impatient. Hang on. Dobie, maybe not impatient. You just haven't found what touched your imagination. H ADHD kids can focus when it means something. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, yeah, there's another rant I'd like to go off on, but I won't. All this branding, HDAD and uh, manic, and that, what is it? Bipolar 1, bipolar 2. And on the spectrum, and oh, give me a break. Why do we have to label and classify everybody? Because some company can make a quit out of flogging drugs for them. There's a movie I saw the other day, I forgot what it was called now. And this mother went in, two mothers went in. And, no, I'm not going to go down that road. But basically they were, they were against medicating their kids. So other people could have an easier life. Um, you know, years ago, you were just a moody person. Then all of a sudden, you had mood swings. And then you were a manic depressant. And then you had bipolar. Now you can have bipolar one or two. Can't you just be someone that, you know, some days you're cranky and some days you're not? Why do we have to classify the... I'm, I, I'm censoring this very heavily. Why do we have to classify everything? Because it suits someone's timetable or it looks good on a piece of paper. I mean, just treat people as human beings, give them respect and dignity and embrace their differences. That's it. Okay, rant over. Oh... You know, I, no. <laughs> rant's not over. I've had people go, oh, I'd like you to meet this guy, but, you know, just watch it because he's D DHD and <laughs> phone home and ET and all this other. I just want to meet the person. They don't give me a background check on them. You know, it's like saying, oh, I'd like you to meet my friend, Ma uh, 
Matthew, oh look, he's had several speeding tickets and he's broken the law uh, with parking fines and um, when he was young he broke a window. He's now 56. That's irrelevant. I will make a judgment on how I feel about you the moment I meet you. And judgments are things that was, oh, you shouldn't make judgments. That's rubbish. Oh, he's off. That's rubbish too. Judgments keep you alive. Oh, I'm going to walk across the road. No judgment. Bang, you get hit by a car. No, judgment. Hang on, is it safe? Should I do this? Okay, it's clear, but my legs are a bit weak. Will I be able to get across the road in time? Oh, no, I don't think I will. Okay, I'll wait. that's a judgment. Guess what? You're still alive. Oh, you make judgments on people. Of course you do. Someone's coming with an axe. What do you do? Go, oh, I'm not going to make a judgment. I am. I'm getting the heck out of here. You know, and it, but it doesn't mean to say that it has to be said in concrete. You can change your mind. There's times I've sort of just on appearances. Oh, my goodness gracious. Yes, I have. Just based on appearance. I've gone, oh, I don't know if I like that person. But then you get past the external appearance and you get to talking with them. You get down to the, the essence of who they are, their heart, their spirit. And you go, gee whiz. I've got to be honest with you. When I first saw you, I thought, oh, that's a bit rough. But... I, I'm connecting with you. There, there's something there. Thank you so much for giving you the time. And I'm, I'm sorry if I prejudged. But, you know, I was like, oh, stop judging me. Excuse me? All right, calm down now. I'll take my tablets. <laughs> oh, dear. Carve a cheetah? No, I can't carve a cheetah because it's going into the arts and craft things. Oh... Oh, I've, I've gone over time and I've missed all the chat. I've been going off. <clears throat> yeah, I'm with you there, Ray. Kids need to learn, eat the wrong things. I tell you what, I've eaten my fair share of snail slugs and worms in my time and I'm still here. I know I've eaten food in restaurants that I'd never eat again. So you tell me. Don't you give me that job. Oh, mate, you couldn't pick... <laughs> Max, you couldn't have picked two worse jobs to give me. I tell you, I have a, um, a pathological negative emotion to both of those careers. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, dear. Anyway, look, that's it. I've done everything I did. Um, we'll pull that out of the clamps tomorrow and put it in the... Oh, no, what I'll do, I will actually pull that out... <coughs> excuse me. I'll pull that out of the clamps tonight and I'll put it in the box tonight and then tomorrow it should be dry so then we can um, scrape the top off and have a look to see how it goes. Might, might, might not, but that I could do that. I'm just... Going through the process here. We couldn't do that. Yeah, that's it. We'll do that. Um, these I'll give another coat to. I'll sand back that thing there where you can see I made that big mistake on the side. You can see it. Or you can't see it from there. But there's some putty in those dovetails because I didn't clamp them down. My fault. I'll wear that. And we can move on to that. Might get better. Um, well, we'll do some more boxes and might do some carving tomorrow. I'll see how I go. I'll see how my coffee turns out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm not saying nothing, Wesley. I've got so many comments I could say after that one, but I'm not going to. Oh. There we go. Oh, where am I up to? Um, anyway, that's it. Yeah, no. <laughs> I just... <laughs> oh, dear. I, just, I, I really wish sometimes, honestly, I wish this was an R-rated show. <laughs> because by crikey, I'd let it rip. And believe me, I can. Anyway, this is Steve pulling the shed door down and saying, remember to keep it sharp. But more importantly, keep it safe. 
Look after yourself, be kind to each other, exercise restraint when expressing opinion, <laughs> opinions. <laughs> Sometimes it works. Anyway, thank you everyone in the chat room. Thanks for the mods. Thanks for people that are watching that uh, haven't got in the chat room. If you'd like, I'd really appreciate it if you whack that subscribe button and hit the notifications. I'll be here again tomorrow where we'll do it all again and totally differently and we'll see what unravels. Um, yesterday I planned on doing boxes and then there was one comment in the chat room, I couldn't even tell you whose it was. I think Louise, you had something to do with it, will show us that Plaster Paris thing and then I looked at this box, oh, we'll do that. So yeah, we're freewheeling. But if there's anything you want to specifically know, please send me an email to admin at woodworkingmasterclass.com.au or send me a message on Facebook or even send me, ask me a question in the YouTube channel. Don't forget if you haven't, um, tomorrow I think it's a drawing of the H&T Gordon catalogue send out $300 gift voucher. You just go on to H&T Gordon, order an online catalogue that costs nothing, post free and mention you saw it on Woodworking Masterclass and answer a simple question. The question is, what sort of timber does Terry make his Gigi planes out of? And I'm going to talk to Terry, he's going to ring me tomorrow, or well, he's going to ring me tomorrow and we can talk to him and he's going to do the draw of the lucky winner. Um, and Murray, yeah, enjoy, enjoy your plane mate. So good on you. Thank you to everyone. Stay safe, follow the rules and regulations. God bless. See you tomorrow. Same time. Bye for now. Thank you.